A week before Thanksgiving in 2014, 28-year-old Akai Gurley visited his friend Melissa at the Pink Houses, a public housing project in a majority Black part of Brooklyn, where she lived. At 11 p.m., they were taking the stairs to leave because the elevator was broken. The lights in the stairs were also broken. At the same time, two cops were patrolling the building because it was designated an inherently dangerous place that required constant surveillance. A cop entered the dark stairwell with his gun in hand and pulled the trigger. Gurley died. When the cops trial began in February 2016, alongside it, protests erupted across the US demanding leniency or freedom for him. The protesters were overwhelmingly Chinese American and they said that officer Peter Liang, who was born in Hong Kong, was being scapegoated. The reasoning was that white policemen who killed black people on duty were not usually indicted and that Liang was being treated this way because he was Asian. It's not fair, said one Mandarin speaking protester. Unfair not because a young black life has been lost, but because the equally young rookie Chinese cop was punished for his crime. Instead of offering support to Gurley's family and condemning police violence, Chinese Americans who support Liang, who say they're anti-racist, ironically end up playing into white supremacist anti-black tropes. Indeed, it seems that in instead of defeating racism, they simply aspire to rise from the oppressed to the oppressor. A 2016 petition on change.org includes this 260 times 300 pixel image. It is impossible to, to track the source of this photograph, which is one of the only images of Liang in which he wears his policeman uniform rather than a court appropriate suit. Taken before Gurley's death, it is a certifier of Liang's profession. And yet paradoxically, the impression it gives is of a boy playing dress up. Liang is baby cheeked and his thin shoulders are slumped. His cap looks comically large on him and his uniform is too loose, bunching at the elbows. He gazes directly into the lens, unsmiling. Perhaps he's trying to look serious or perhaps he's been bullied into having the photograph taken and is simply trying to survive the ordeal. Indeed, the setting is a mundane domestic one with a stereotypical rice cooker in the background. It was cl clearly taken by and for family, likely a celebratory keepsake from Liang's initiation into the NYPD. More than any of the other pictures of Liang that we see online, this photograph is about his copness. It's both evidence that he is a cop and expresses a self-conscious performance of that identity and the potential held within it. See the lanyard that holds his ID and interestingly, the mini photo of him that peeks out from it. Like a college graduation portrait or yearbook photo, it's as much, as a, it's as much a tribute to past efforts and an announcement of future achievements as it is an arrested moment in the present or that magical quality that Walter Benjamin searched for in 19th century photographic portraits, quotes, the here and now, the suchness of that long past minute. Perhaps Liang's parents posted this online, proudly showing off their son, who has achieved the so-called American dream, who has gone from being a vulnerable immigrant child to assuming control, authority, and stability. Retooled sometime later in Cindy's petition that we see here pleading clemency, this snapshot becomes imbued with nostalgia, even a sense of loss. For Chinese American supporters of Liang, they might imagine him as their son, whose bright future is in jeopardy, all because of a quote unquote accident. Whereas when originally taken, the picture had been about celebrating Liang's policeman identity, Cindy's petition now strips this ascertainment from him, making him look meek and weak, a boy out of his element rather than someone whose job it is to carry guns and apprehend criminals. It is no surprise that Cindy chose to use this picture to suggest that Liang, quote, may not be suited to his job, unquote that he should be fired, but not sent to prison. This call to the past allows the viewer to imagine the could have been, in addition to the other truth that that has been elaborated by Roland Barthes. Truth and fantasy come together. The fantasy makes the photograph feel undoubtedly true. And simultaneously, the fact that the photograph was taken allows a fantasy to be sustained. In this case, the fantasy in question is that of solidarity between Liang and the viewer. Cindy further referred to, quote, people like me in the, con in the text of her petition. By this, she means Chinese Americans and adjacent people like Danny Chun, the judge for the case, who is Korean American. It is an attachment that comes from emotion. And here I'm thinking of Sarah Ahmed, who wrote, quote, emotions do things and they align individuals with communities or bodily space with social space through the very intensity of their attachments. Emotions define us, not the other way around. Emotions are what sticks us to each other as groups or collectives, and they don't mean anything until they've moved through us, like a strange smell in a room that everyone complains about together. For people like Cindy, I would guess that the specific emotions provoked by this photograph are pity and anxiety, 
pity for Liang, who faces jail time for an accident, and anxiety that his scapegoating represents racism against Chinese Americans that could one day be directed to their own families. Both of these emotions are rooted in the viewer's personal identification with Liang. In the imagined concept of a Chinese American community that includes both Liang and themselves that they have to defend. As in Ahmed, emotion creates an us versus them dynamic. Those who support Liang do so because they take his indictment personally. And the more personally they take it, the more they feel bound into community. Perhaps this is what drives Chinese American supporters of Liang to proclaim that black lives don't matter. They think they're saying yellow lives matter, but really they're saying blue lives matter forgetting that cops are never here to protect anyone except the status quo. It is ironic that this rookie photograph of Liang is meant to act as an alibi to say, how could you send this boy to prison? When in fact, this is very much the face of someone who actually committed murder. Ironic, but not surprising, considering the very malleable relationship that cops have with the truth. In many other cases, cops can be recorded admitting committing murder and still face no consequences, revealing the ontological dislocation of modern ideas of crime and justice. I hope that analyzing quite quickly just some of the many meanings in this photograph has shown that in order to confront anti-Blackness in contemporary ethnic communities and think about how to build a future of real solidarity, it is important to examine the effective power of photography. Thank you.